Welcome to Reread, where I'm rereading through the Expanded Universe in chronological order this time. And boy, is it interesting. Alright, we're handling just T Jedi Twilight. Yes, instead of doing reviews on a whole trilogy, I'm doing one book at a time, which is what a lot of people love. And it's good because a lot of these trilogies, I forget what happens in which book in the trilogy. The adventure kind of all runs together here. And I'll explain what I mean in a minute. Um, I'd forgotten about Nick Rostow, who's in this. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I forgot. And he's not that big of a character. Like, he pops in and out. Um, I mean, he is at the end a bigger character. But I just totally forgotten that he was in book one. Uh, but he is the one who... Uh, witnesses Evan Peel's death, which for some reason, for the longest, I thought that was Jax who did it. And then Jax got the mission from Evan Pell, but Nick Rusteau gets the mission from Evan Pell, uh, who, who on his last dying wish, hey, that he needs to find a droid that has sensitive information. Um, now, Din and I-5 from MedStar uh, it's a year later. They've been on Coruscant for a whole year trying to find Jax with no luck because Jax Pavin is a common name. There's only, I can't remember what they said, 10,000 plus names of Jax Pavin. And they've been slowly crossing them off the list, but it's taking forever. And they're finally running out of money. Um, and Den, of course, is drunk again. They have lots and lots of humor between them, which is great. It's good. It's good to see, in, in publication order, MedStar came out first too, or prior to uh, Jedi Knight, uh, 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 Coruscant Knights. And uh, so you're witnessing them again, and it's so much fun. It's almost like you, they, you, you picked up where they left off. In fact, it's sad. Later on, Din finds out that uh, Baris Ophie has died. And it's like, oh man, she was wonderful. Yeah, they really knew her. They had an experience with her, and she's won a very few Jedi that died during Order 66, it appears. Uh, Card is back, and I love Card. He's the avian assassin that works for Black Sun. What's he been doing in one year? Well, he still didn't get revenge on, on that other group. I thought they were maybe going to talk about that, but he never. I'm sure he did, but they don't mention it. Uh, he has worked his way up in Black Sun, and he is up for the title of Vigo. His only uh, you know competition, Prince Caesar. Hmm, wonder who's going to win that one, right? Uh, and chronologically, this would be Prince Caesar's first appearance. Now, this is funny because the whole Caesar story I remember, but for some reason, I thought it was book two. I thought the entire adventure from book one, except for Even Pell uh, dying, was in book two. That's so, I don't even know why I thought about that. Now, what's book two? Is it uh, something I thought was book one, I guess? Um, but uh, there's a funny scene with I-5. There's a lot of funny scenes. My favorite one is when they're in the underworld. They think they found Jax Pavin, and he's stuck in the underworld level, whatever. And Dean says, hey, plug into that data port. It looks like it's working. Let's see if we can find, you know, you know, look at the cameras and see if we can find face recognition. And I-5 was like, I'm not going to plug into that data port. I don't know who's been in there. <laughs> he said, hey, your antivirus uh, software is up, up to date, right? Go ahead, plug in there. It's so funny. It's their their dialogue the whole time. They are really the stars, in my opinion. Jax Pavin, you don't really get to see that much. I mean, he has a little bit of a storyline going, but it's really not that big a deal until they fi until I five and Din come across him. You know, but even then, he feels like he's a secondary character. I don't know and who. Well, who would be the main character? I don't know. To me, Din and I five are the main characters of the book not Jax Pavin. In fact, right now, as of this book, I'm not really endeared to Jax Pavin. I mean, sure, he, and, he, he has met I-5. Um, I-5 made a joke. He said, ah, I see sarc the sarcasm gene is alive and well from father to son, you know, because Jax makes a sarcastic comment toward I-5, which was also funny too. But right now, Jax and I-5, in my opinion, right now, they don't have any chemistry. Now, of course, that could build up in the next two books, or three books, uh, but for right now, I felt like it was not really Jack's, a Jax Pavin novel. So a little bit different from the first time I read this through. Now, Nick Rostow would later on be captured. Uh, Vader's going to force him to work for him. He doesn't want to. He is going to be betraying his good friend Jax. In fact, I-5 can see it. His sensor readings you know, indicate his temperature's rising. He's sweating. He's done this. He's lying. You know, he's, like, he's got his own internal lie detector. And Jax is going, no, Jax reach out and reaches out to the Force, or says he does. He went, he's fine. And I-5 is kind of confused over this, because all, all, all uh, indications 
uh, of his uh, bodily functions and indicate that he is lying. He is deceiving. And of course, it's kind of revealing that Nick has... And Nick doesn't want to do this. The whole time he's wringing his hands over it all. And don't worry, he'll, he, he doesn't really betray them in the end. Of course, he comes through as the good guy he always was. In fact, I'll say this now. Um, they have a scene in there where they're fighting Caesar at the end. And golly, that fight is way too long. It's like 30 pages. Like over two chapters or three chapters, they're still fighting Caesar. You know, they, he gets ca they get captured by him, they do the dialogue, then they break out again and fight him and... It just keeps on going on and on and on. But during it, there's a, I think, a piece of glass or whatever gets stuck in his sternum, and he falls over, and it says, you know, he, he blissfully accepts the darkness. You're thinking, oh, wow, he died. And I remember thinking, I don't remember this. I don't remember his death. And sure enough, no one dies in Star Wars unless you're in the New Jedi Order era. And of course, he is alive. Ah, ha, ha. You know, he's not dead, you know, says I-5, even though everyone thinks he's dead. Um, uh, but Caesar is the prince is outmaneuvering uh, Card on this. He sets Card up for failure uh, in, front, in front of the underlord, uh, Peel, I think is his name, or Pell. And as Prince leaves to see, you know, because Card's about to get executed, the underlord surprises him and says, hey, look, you want to go home. I know you don't want to be a Vigo anymore. You want out of Black Sun. You just want to go home, which is true. He's always wanted to go to his home world. He went, and Prince, Caesar, He's very ambitious. He wants my job. He won't stop at Vigo. He'll move up till he gets my job. I don't want him getting my job. He's too ambitious. So you're the master assassin. You've never failed. Here's your task. You assassinate Caesar, and I'll let you go home. Scott free. You know, Black Sun will never call on you again. So it's a win-win for both. So now Card is on the mission to assassinate Caesar. Of course he doesn't. Caesar's going to uh, win out in the end. Uh, again, it makes you think that Card's going to die. And, and again, I thought... Oh, wow, did he die? I don't remember that. Oh, no, no, no one dies. No one dies, unless you're in New Jail Order, I guess. And so he makes it all right. He makes it alive and uh, off, off with the group as well. Um, there, there's a big revelation here that, that, again, I thought this was in book two. They revealed this, but in book one, they revealed it. Uh, Jax is losing the Force. He's losing his connection in the Force. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it isn't. And there's one time where it was just working, then he tries to do a Force push on, on Prince Caesar. Prince Caesar freezes and flinches because he thinks he's about to get for Force pushed, and then nothing happens. And he smiles and, and goes back after attacking uh, Jax. Uh, like I said, the fight with Caesar at the end is fun, but honestly, honestly, I believe it went at least two chapters, possibly three. And it was just a little too long. In fact, uh, Vader at the end, of course, is coming because he's trying to capture Jax Pavin. In fact, we find out that the droid was just a big red herring. I mean, the droid exists, but he carries no important data. And no important data for the rebellion or at all. It was a rumor that Vader had started that I guess Evan Peel believed and thought it was such a very important thing to do, it, it, it really kind of stretches the imagination a little bit. Because like, well, why did Evan Pell, what evidence did Evan Pell see that made it so vital, so vital for the, for the salvation of the you know, rebellion to, you know, to survive? They must get this droid's information. What was it? it all, all we find out is that Vader, it was just an elaborate ruse to get Jax Pavin. Why does he want Jax Pavin? We don't know yet as of this book. Which I thought we did by then. Um, well, he wants all Jedi, of course. Uh, that's that's one thing. But uh, the factory blows up. The reactor core, I think, in the factory blows up. Vader barely makes it out alive. They th the, the good guys think they've killed Vader, and Jack's like, no, nah, he's still out there. Well, of course, did Jax die? And that's what they're hoping that Vader bought. They think that maybe Jax is dead. Um, now, at the end of this, and this is one that's a, another little bit confusing, um, everyone leaves together, and even the lieutenant who was working for Darth Vader joins the good guys and is on their ship deserting with them. And I, I remember that the lieutenant was always afraid and fearful of Vader, but I don't remember them working both sides. And when the lieutenant just switched, uh, the imperial lieutenant switched at the last minute, that was confusing to me. Um, again, maybe I missed something at the beginning, but I, I, during the whole thing, you know, I, I just I just didn't see where they they were trying to defect. 
So that was one little thing that I just don't remember that was uh, still kind of confusing to me. Overall, the story's fine. The story's fine. It reads very smoothly. It was an easy read. Uh, and, but Din and I-5 are by far, by far the highlight. Not really a Nick Russo guy. I know they're trying to give him his own character. I know he's from Shatterpoint, but I still don't care about him. Maybe that's Matthew Stover's fault. <laughs> All right, folks. I'll see you next time.